What do you think are some of the biggest misconceptions that young people have about being an adult? Oh, wow. Um, I think the biggest misconception that young people have about adults is that they know what the fuck they're doing. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know if we're allowed to swear on here. No, you but, are. Um, trust me. Trust me. Um, yeah. I think that I have a friend named Clayton Cubit, and he's a photographer and like, he he's constantly telling people like, "Hey, teenagers, you know that thing that you suspect that everyone like is just winging it and like they don't really know what they're up to." He's like, "That's real, and you can use it to your advantage, <laughs> you know, because adults really don't know what they're doing anymore." I mean, I think that that's one of the things about becoming middle aged is like you realize like I just got here, man. Like, Kurt Vonnegut would say that to his kids. His kids would, like, be railing at him about, like, the state of the world. Dad, why don't you, you know, this is, everything's, but he's, and he would say, shut up. I just got here myself, you know? Hmm. And so I think that's one of, like, the really big misconceptions. But I also think that, like, that said, that it's always worth, like, listening to old people, you know? Um... Because just because they've been, you know, just because they've done it, they've been through stuff. And so it is that tension of, again, another tension of like old people have experience, but they're also just beginners because we just don't live long enough to be anything other than like an amateur, you know, like we just don't we don't get enough time, I don't think, to ever really become experts, certainly not in life because life changes so much constantly that nobody's really an expert at life, you know? Um, because the minute you've got one thing figured out, it's like, oh no, <laughs> like this thing changed. And um, so yeah, I think I think that that's the biggest misconception is like one, that adults have it figured out, but also, you know, there's, but yeah, that tension again, that there's value and experience, but also knowing that everyone's like kind of perpetually winging it you know, kind of indefinitely. And certainly more the, the way the world changes. I mean, you know, uh, I, I made a poem the other day and it said something like where, you know, the future arrives and all the teachers become students or something like that, or all experts become students, you know, just because like things change and, and the world changes. And, you know, I, I've made a couple of poems like that. One was like, you know, the minute I learned the rules, the rules did not apply to me. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know, that yeah. kind of thing. Um, but no, I, I think for young people in particular, I would say you just you have no idea the amount that people are winging it. And so if you have any kind of imposter syndrome or you're worried about doing it wrong or being wrong or anything, you really have to lean into just winging it and going for it because that's what everyone else who does anything is doing. <laughs> Speaking of winging it, what would you say are some of the biggest regrets that you have from your 20s? Oh, from my 20s? Uh, ooh, it's hard because like I probably would have partied more. <laughs> really? <laughs> and then no one ever no one ever says mm. that. I got married when I was really young. Uh, I was 23 when we got married, or it, everyone said it was young at the time. Doesn't feel like that. Um, I don't necessarily regret it though, because it's like now I can, you know, now I I really love my life. I probably would have like. I, I think it's just the problem is is it's all like, it's just all. The older you get, the cliches become true, and you just hate it because you're like, ugh, all that cliched stuff they told. Like travel at every opportunity. You know, that kind of thing. Oh, I wish I'd traveled more. I think the main thing is, though, uh, one of my favorite writers, George Saunders, says, all of my biggest regrets have been failures of kindness. He said, when I, was, when I failed to be kind to other people, those are the things I regret most in life. And I think kindness is something very underrated, especially for someone in their 20s and so i think the more you can be kinder to people the the happier you'll be you know later on um so maybe i'd say that be kind yeah kindness you know i regret that and just you know taking every opportunity if someone wants to go some do it you know yeah within yeah. reason 
I'm very, yeah, I do not regret not trying heroin. That was always a good thing. <laughs> Nothing you shoot yeah, yeah, or snort. Yeah. I never, like, like, staying off of hard drugs, I felt like that was a really, really good choice. And I'm glad I Definitely. made that choice. <laughs> Yeah, one of my one of my um, least favorite advices that I see out there when it comes to young people is that like you should lock yourself in your room and just work. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, like it, obviously it sucks not to reach your potential, but in my opinion, it sucks even more to like not to like not live your life and spend your entire twenties or your young life in your room working on something when you could have been out having experiences. And I could argue that those experiences are more are as valuable as sitting in your room and just working all day. Experience is what life is really made out of, and I think the, the, you know, people are always asking me how to get things done, and the question, you know, getting things done isn't that difficult. Finding things worth doing is much more difficult, and I would say that your 20s should be about that, is to look around and find things worth doing. Um, but, you know, if you got, if you know what you want to do, on the other hand, there's nothing wrong with, you know, going at it, going for it. Um, so yeah. But if you, but if you hang out in your friend with your friends on the weekend, like you're going to be okay. I think that's a big, uh, yes, that's I a big do. thing. Like, yes, you can work hard, but you can, you can go out every once in a while. Like you'll be fine. I don't like, think anyone okay. on their deathbed says, gosh, I wish I had spent less time with those people I loved and who yeah, loved me. Exactly. You know, I yeah. mean, I don't think that happens. And I think friendship is something that this world sorely lacks. And I think that there were, you know, we really have a crisis of particularly men. I worry about men a lot, you know, having good solid male friendships that are kind of nurturing and cool. Um, that's a really important thing. Um, and I think that's why guys golf. <laughs> like mm, yeah. I, my dad used to golf all the time and be like, why in the hell would you spend four hours outside with a bunch of other losers hitting some golf ball around and then i realized when i got older it's like oh it's the fellowship it's just like yeah. being around other guys um, and so like i tell people you know especially people who are like my age it's like you need to get like a really dumb hobby that's social so like i don't really like to golf but i love to ride bikes and it's kind of the same thing you know, you go out for two or three hours with a bunch of other dudes and end up having beers after, you know, it's like a really important thing. Um, and I think like, you know, fellowship, interaction with your fellow human beings. I mean, that's really what it's what it's about, you know, and I think people are going to need that even more, you know, as the world becomes more digital and artificial and, you know, all that stuff. Um, it will always be people that make your life worth worth it. My last question for you is, if you had a minute with your younger self, what would you tell him? <laughs> Buy Apple stock. Take all your money and put, no. Um, <laughs> here's the sports almanac from the, from the yeah, yeah. machine. Now, um, I, you know, just be nice. Don't, don't be such a brat. Like, just, just be kinder to people. Don't, you don't know everything. My dad was really good at that. Like, I mean, my my mom told me I could do anything, and my dad said, "No one will ever care how smart you are. It'll be like, you, you know." And so this is like another really good tension, is this kind of like you can do anything. Okay, prove it. Like, pro you know. So, you know, my dad was always really good at that. He was like, "No one's ever going to care how smart you are. It's going to be like how you treat them." And um, I think that was like really good advice. Maybe I'd just say your parents kind of know what they're talking about. <laughs> Maybe. No, but I just think like just be just be kinder. Don't don't just be a jerk. And, um, you know, just be nicer to people. I don't think it I don't, I don't think that fails.